Today at HPA, we're unboxing an awesome ECU. We like awesome ECUs here, and we figure because you're watching this video, chances are you do too. We're going to go through some of its features, explain why it's so awesome, and show you what you get inside the box when you buy one. This is the Elite 2500 from Haltech. Uh, it's a fully programmable aftermarket ECU, capable of running up to a 12-cylinder engine. Uh, it can also run a four-rotor engine. It's got two dedicated knock input channels, which become very important during the tuning process. It's got eight injector drivers and eight ignition drivers, which means it can run a V8 engine in a fully sequential mode. Really important with the number of LS swaps out there these days. It's also got motorsport features, that's anti-lag and boost control, for example. It also supports OBD2 protocol communication over the CAN bus network, meaning you can interface it with the more common and cheaper scan tools on the market. So you can get a gauge display up on your cell phone. Now that's pretty cool. So let's get into this thing. Like most ECU manufacturers, uh, they've provided it in a pretty attractive case, which is almost impossible to get into. One thing they have done here though that is really cool, which I've never seen before, is the inside of the sleeve, if you were to unfold it, is actually a template for the mounting of the ECU, which is really, really cool. I'm not going to unfold it here though, because we are giving this ECU away, and I assume the new owner is probably going to want this in one piece. Now we've got that unboxed, we can unbox. So it comes to us in uh, cut foam, which is nice and tight in there, so it's going to make its trip anywhere around the world without uh, sustaining any damage. On the top here we've got the tuning interface cable, which is uh, standard USB type B to type A, which is really good, because uh, these things have a tendency to grow legs and walk away, so totally standard cable is easy to replace, and nice to see. Then we've got the actual unit itself. Uh, so that is a die-cast metal base, nice and chunky, with four good mounting tabs there. Uh, the top here is plastic. Uh, they are sealed together quite well. They do uh, rate this as a being a sealed unit, so you can install it in a boat or an off-road vehicle. Underneath this cover here, we will have the interface connection. So this is uh, your tuning interface connection, an auxiliary USB connection, and this will be CAN bus and power. So we've got the uh, ports on the top here, which are where the main loom connects into. They're AMP SuperSeal 1.0 connectors, uh, which are really good because they're pretty commonly available. You can get them from a lot of electronic suppliers. The pins are really easy to crimp and uh, they're easy to insert into the connector bodies as well. Plus they're sealed, so uh, maintains the sealing of the entire device. We've got the map sensor connection here. It's got a built-in three bar map sensor, so that's absolute, meaning you can run up to two bar of positive pressure. Other bits we've got in the box here. Uh, got a pretty cool looking USB key, so that's got the Haltech uh, programming software on it, which is called ESP, which stands for Elite System Programmer. Uh, it's about four gigs in size, so once you're done with it, you can probably format it and uh, have a pretty cool USB key on your keyring. We've got the Haltech uh, little bit of documentation here. This is their quick start guide. It's got all the information you need to get the ECU up and running as quick as possible. Uh, it's going to have some power supply diagrams in there and information on wiring up all the different sensors. We've got a wiring pinout here uh, in full color, which is really nice to see, makes it easy to follow. Uh, you've got one connector on one side and the other connector on the other side. Uh, lots of diagrams really uh, making it very clear what sensors get connected to which inputs. And of course you get some stickers. These are really, really important because each one of these that goes on the car gives you 20 horsepower. So to whoever ends up winning this Haltech unit, I'm sorry these won't be in there because I need them for my RX-7. Cheers. Now we've got everything physically out of the box, we can talk about the unit in a little bit more detail. Uh, so when we're talking about the in, its input and output capabilities, earlier on we mentioned that it's got eight injector and eight ignition drivers. The injector drivers in particular are pretty cool uh, because they're all programmable for the amount of current they'll output, meaning you can drive a lot of different type of injectors out of them. So uh, saturated high impedance injectors or any type of low impedance injector. There's also 11 user-definable outputs, two of which can be used to run a drive-by-wire throttle, which for an ECU of this level that's aimed at modern cars is really important. Uh, four of the outputs can also be used to drive stepper motors, so that covers all your options for idle control motors as well. There's also five general purpose outputs, which can be used to run things like boost control solenoids, a shift light, or the tachometer of the vehicle, for example. Uh, they're all short circuit protected, so uh, if something goes wrong, you can be sure you're not actually going to damage the ECU, which is really, really nice to see. 
On the input side of things, we've got just as many options. Uh, we'll start by talking about the five dedicated input channels, two of which are the trigger signals for the engine. So that's one for the crank and one for the cam sync reference input. Uh, they, they can be configured to interface with either Hall effect or variable reluctor sensors. It also has two dedicated knock sensor input channels. Uh, as knock sensing requires some pretty special circuitry inside the ECU. And the last dedicated input is for an ignition switch signal, uh, as it's used to control the output channel that you configure to drive the main power supply relay of the vehicle. There are 14 general purpose input channels, 10 of which read analog signals, the other four reading digital signals. The 10 analog channels all have switchable pull-up resistors on them, which is really great as it means you can hook a variable resistance sensor, like an engine coolant temperature sensor, up to any of them and get a valid reading out of it. The digital signal inputs are what's called a synchronized pulsed input. Basically that means the ECU keeps track of when it receives that pulse and you can use them to keep track of things like cam position if you've got a multi-cam engine that runs variable valve timing on both the intake and the exhaust cams. Uh, that being said, they can also be used to read more simple digital input signals. So you could run four wheel speed sensors into it for example and use some of the traction control capabilities. Another feature that really struck me when I was reading the documentation was the number of sequential injection stages that you can set up in the ECU, which in the 2500 is four. Now that might seem like a little bit of overkill, but in these days of running E85 fuel, where you can need to inject a truly massive amount of fuel to hit your power goals, uh, having access to those sequential injection stages can be really handy. You can get your engine to idle nicely, cruise nicely, but also make the good power when you really put your foot into it. As we've talked about, the tuning software you use to set up the Haltech Elite series is called ESP. Uh, it's a pretty great piece of software that's really, really configurable. You can set up all your own tuning pages with access to different variables and put gauges wherever you like them to make the job that much easier and quicker when you're on the dyno. Uh, we have got a full worked example on using ESP to tune the VQ35 fitted to our 350Z race car as part of our practical standalone tuning course, which is a really, really good watch if uh, you're considering the Haltech Elite for your project. A couple of things I would have liked to see in an ECU of this range would be a more configurable CAN bus communication side of things. It'd be really nice if we could interface it to more of the other products out there in the automotive aftermarket. Uh, also, an ECU of this caliber, I think, should have a built-in wideband controller. However, they have provided a solution for this with their uh, the product we've got in this box here, which we're going to open up very shortly. Now, if you're in the market for an ECU of this caliber, you're probably going to be aware of Haltech's other range of ECUs, the Platinum series, and you might be wondering why you'd pay the extra money to go for the Elite series. Basically, it's newer. It's got a much faster processor in it, which means Haltech's been able to pack much more functionality into it. Particularly, the tuning tables and the configuration software are very customizable, meaning that you can accomplish almost any custom tuning strategy that you can think of. You could map the fuel in 4D, for example, with an overlay table for intake air temp correction. Another key difference is that the Elite Series is completely sealed, so you can install it in a marine or off-road application, whereas you can't do that with the Platinum Series of ECUs. Now we can have a look at the other product that Haltech have sent us, which is their external wideband controller that communicates with the Haltech Elite via CAN bus. So right away on the top of the box we've got the main wideband controller unit here. Uh, it is a extruded aluminium enclosure with end plates on it, so that's a reasonably typical construction. They do it in their Platinum series only, so you need to be aware that these aren't a sealed unit, and you'll have to take that into account when you're choosing where to mount it in the vehicle. On one end we've got the main interface cable connection, so this is going to provide the connections to the wideband sensor itself and also the analog output connections back to the ECU. On the other side we've got the CAN interface connection, so this is going to provide the network connection back to the ECU. Um, always a better option to go with a network connection for transmitting wideband data if you can, as small voltage offsets in the Analog sensor data can actually have a really big effect when you're using the analog output on the data going back to the ECU. The sensor they provide you with is a standard Bosch LSU 4.2. Uh, they've chosen to put their own branding on it and change the connector to a Deutsch DT. Uh, they've been able to do this because on the unit they've provided you with a calibration trim pot and a procedure that's documented for calibrating the unit to the wideband sensor. Uh, and that takes place of the original calibration resistor that would have been in the factory fitted Bosch connector. Uh, they also give you a main power supply fuse, so that will go in line with the power supply to the unit for uh, protection. 
and a weld-in threaded bung. Uh, this is actually quite a nice weld-in bung as far as they go because it's got a stepped lip on it, which means you'll be able to drill a hole this size in your exhaust, uh, sit this in place and then weld around it and it'll all hold itself in place very tidily. We've got the uh, main wiring harness. So this is a pretty good length, it's around about two and a half metres long, meaning you can mount the unit well away from where the sensor needs to be installed. Uh, Haltech have done a pretty nice job with this, they have individually labelled all the ends, uh, so while they provide the documentation for all the pinouts uh, online, they also have documented it on the wiring harness itself, which is really really great to see. One other nice thing they've done, which you don't see too often, is that they've provided you with uh, non-recovered heat shrink on all the ends of the loom, which means when you get it in place and everything's trimmed to the right length, you can shrink all these down and make it really, really tidy. Uh, very important when you're doing that though, is that you use a heat gun that has a selectable heat range, as this expandable braid does melt very, very easily, so you need to be pretty careful of that. And the last cable we have here is the CAN bus uh, connection cable, so this plugs into the unit and connects it back to your Haltech ECU. Last but never least, we've got the printed documentation, which is Haltech's quick start guide. Uh, so once again this will give you all the information you need to get the unit up and running as quickly as possible. Overall, a solid package here from Haltech, with the addition of a couple of extra items, an engine coolant temperature sensor, an intake air temp sensor and a wiring harness, you've got everything here you need to get this installed on your vehicle, tuned, up and running and get access to the great features inside that ECU. We thought we'd better show you some of the sweet swag that Haltech sent us as well. We've got caps, lanyards, adult beverage koozies, and uh, these sweet key rings, so if you forget what ECU's in your car, all you need to do is look down at your keys and you'll be reminded. If you're lucky, some of this might even find its way into the getaway. Or it might not. Definitely not this key ring. This is mine now.